The Air TV News broadcast crew and I, Delete Sahaya, are now ready for your daily news briefing at inter local time. But first, let us catch up with the major headlines. New dumps inaugurated in Al Aegash sub zone. Rehabilitation for families of martyrs in Morka sub zone. Deadly floods killed over 50 in northern Chad. And India completes development of satellite launchers. On our local news, new dams constructed through the collaboration of the Ministry of Agriculture and Gashbarka Region Administration and the 23rd and 26th Division of the Air Train Defense Forces have been inaugurated in the administrative area of Sheshabit and Agaro Adiwarka in the Alagash subzone. These new dams are expected to significantly alleviate the potable water supply challenge for both livestock and the humans in the area. Mr. Gede Stefanos, administrator of the subzone, commended the participation of the Defense Forces in all development initiatives within the subzone, emphasizing that the strong efforts are being made to address the ongoing potable water challenge. Engineer Atashim Yamane and Engineer Hagos Mengsab, coordinators of the dam construction projects, stated that the new dams built at a cost of 8 million nakfa have a capacity of holding 150,000 and 135,000 cubic meters of water, respectively. Mahmoud Ali Huri, Governor of the region, and Mr. Abubakar Osman, Director General of Agriculture and Land, expressed their expectation that the dams will significantly contribute to ensuring a stable water supply for both humans and livestock. They also commended the integrated effort demonstrated during the construction process. During the event, a special award was presented to 23rd and 26th Division of the recognition of their outstanding contribution. The occasion was featured further rather highlighted by cultural programs and the cultural troupe of 26th Division. The Ministry of Labor and Social Warfare branch in Molk Isabzon has rehabilitated five families of martyrs and providing them with livestock and materials for small-scale businesses. According to Mr. Faras Lasayamane, head of the office branch, three families were provided with livestock worth of 10,000 nakfa each, while two families received material for small-scale businesses valued at 5,000 nakfa each. Mr. Faras Lasse also noted that previously 370 disabled and disadvantaged individuals as well as foster families have been rehabilitated with carts. In a related news, government employees in the Digga subzone contributed 61,000 nakfa in support of the families of martyrs. The viewers will be back with the international news shortly. Do stay tuned. Welcome back. At least 54 people have been killed due to flooding following continuous rainfall in Jad's northern province of Tibet Sea authorities and local media said on Thursday. The rainfall, which started Friday and continued to Wednesday, destroyed properties such as Mohamti Tochi Chidi, governor of the Tibet Sea province. Over 50,000 people have been displaced by the flooding in the province and the local media reported. Fatime Bukhar Kosi, a country's Minister of Social Action, National Solidarity and Humanitarian Affairs, said that Thursday that the mark makeshift shelters have been erected to host displaced people. Jad has been experiencing flooding since mid-May that has already affected 245,000 people, according to the UN Office for the Coordination of the Humanitarian Affairs. The organization reported last week that the torrential rains and severe flooding have already killed 40 people in the country. On our last news, the Indian Space Research Organization on Friday successfully completed a third and final development flight of the small satellite launch vehicle. The Indian Space Agency will now transfer the technology to Indian private industries and state-run Space News India Limited. In a statement, IISRO said the third developmental flight 
of SSLV was successful as SSLV D3 placed on Earth observation satellite EOS 8 precisely into the orbit. The SSLV is capable of launching mini micro and nano satellites 10 to 500 kilometers mass into 50 kilometers planar orbit. According to ISRO, the design drivers of the SSLV are low cost and turn around the time flexibility in accommodating multiple satellites, launch on demand feasibility, and minimal launch infrastructure requirements extra. Meanwhile, the EOS 8 is the first of its kind mission built on standard of ISRS Microsat IMS 1 bus with a suit of advanced playloads for observation in IR range novel GNSSR playload and SIG UV diameters. The viewers, we've come to the end of tonight's news. Let's have a quick recap of the headlines. New dumps inaugurated in the Alagasta zone. Rehabilitation of families of materials in Montesa zone. Deadly floods kill over 50 in northern Chad. India completes development of satellite launchers. That wraps up our stories for tonight. Thanks for watching and have a good night.